Hey everyone, Sean Dowin here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very special video for you guys. I have a special interview and a, kind of a Q&A with my friend Juan Bourne. He's a very successful self-publisher. And so Juan, welcome to the channel. Thank you very much, Sean. I'm honored to be on your channel. I'm already a fan many years. Now the first time I'm yeah, available to feature on it. Really happy. Yeah, and this is actually the first interview that I'm actually interviewing somebody else instead of somebody interviewing me. So I'm very excited you're the first one on the channel. So Juan, just in case uh, some of the viewers, I'm sure you know you have a YouTube channel as well and our audience may overlap a little bit, but in case somebody who's watching don't know who you are, can you give us a little story, your background and how you got started with self-publishing? Yeah, of course. Um, where shall I start? can start too many years um, ahead, but I will anyway, yeah. because I wanted to make money online since I knew of the internet. And that's way back mm -hmm. in the last, in the previous century already. So I always had back in my mind, I want to make money online, but I was always um, postponing, uh, afraid to start, um, yeah, being comfortable with a day job, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I was postponing, postponing, postponing. I did some weak attempts to make money online, but I never make any any cent online. And then I saw some YouTube channel of a, a guy without hair, yeah. and he was making a killing with self-publishing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, if he can do it, I should be able to do it. So yeah. back in 2017, August 2017, I published my first book, and I'm happy to reveal my first book to your audience, so your yeah viewers as well, the yeah. name was, fabulous name, Bitcoin, what is Bitcoin, yeah. question mark, with of course some subtitle which I changed two times, from Johan van Amsterdam, so the pen name could have been better, but there's another story, yeah. and then, yeah, I think the book cost me about $55 to get it done, and in the first yeah. month, in August 2017, yeah. I made 70 euros. Okay. Then I thought, okay, I didn't make a penny until now, but this, I'm onto something. This might work. Yeah. And then I started publishing. Nice. Yeah. I have a yeah. few questions about that. So, 55 euros to make a book, meaning you probably was, the book was probably 5,000 word or something. I, you know, I, don't do that yeah. again what i did back in the day it's not uh huh? it, but that was teached with it that old school course i bought from okay. that old guy and all those principles don't work anymore so never do this at home only at your own risk but what i did was i uh, hired a writer from fiverr mm -hmm. and i think at the end the book turned out turned out to be twelve thousand words really okay um but and i thought well i think in the course um they teach about seven, eight thousand words, but I already thought, well, yeah, that's yeah, that's not a book. So I already yeah. wanted to make it longer. So at the end, it uh, went out twelve thousand word books, gotcha. and I think it was a female writer, and she did quite a good job. Yeah, and I did a, quite a precise book online about all the things I knew about Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. I was a tech tech nerd, so I did some good investigation, and she did uh, she did a bad job. No. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious because. You know, I started with that course as well when I first started, and that's what they teach is like 5,000, 6,000, yeah. super short, you know, and I followed it, and it didn't really work at all, so. Didn't work, no. Yeah, very interesting. No, no but that was just uh, because of the Bitcoin hype that it worked for a small amount of time, because when I had, I was working full-time, I were published, I thought, okay, this works. I so I continued publishing books. Mm. But then 12 months later, in August 2018, I had published seven books, and I made a grand total of not even 10 euros. Okay. So I went from 70 with one book, with my first book in the first month, yeah. to 10, 12 months later, having published seven books. So, um, yeah, something wasn't going well as I was hoped, of it. not as well as I hoped, of course, yeah. So you made seven books, and in one year you only made that much, but yeah. 
I think how long did it take you to go from that to 10k in a month? Because I know that you are making 10k in a month right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, then I thought, well, things have to change. Mm -hmm. eh? But seem to work for the bulk guy doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So I need to level up my game. I need to level up my publishing skills. So I invested in different courses, etc. I went to mastermind with other fellow publishers to get a little bit yeah connections yeah. and then um, yeah i just went all in and then from august 2018 where i made 10 euros to august 2019 mm -hmm. i already made a goal for myself for one year i want to make 10k a month yeah. and yeah i worked like crazy i was working publishing publishing trying to learn everything I could, but I hit my goal, 10K a month, in 12 months later, in August 2019, so nice. uh, really cool, really cool. I yeah. like it, yeah, it's, it's amazing when you first hit that 10K, I remember how yeah. it felt too, and man, I couldn't even imagine actually hitting it when I first started this business, Yeah, and it's, it's amazing because you get used to it so fast too, I know it's terrible, but then once you start making 10K, you want to make more, and then More, if your yeah. income drops a little bit and say like you're you went up to like 15 and then drop it drops to 11 you're kind of sad but if you look back at it that's still really good compared to you know where you started <laughs> yeah of course yeah yeah but, but then i also had a mixed feeling mm -hmm. because uh, yeah i made 10k but i was working 60 hours a week mm -hmm. to be honest i was i outsourced the book writing of course outsourced the coffee design yeah. but all the other parts I did myself, yeah. Okay. So, I believe, you know, you spent so much hours uh, back then building that business, but right now you only work very little, right? So you definitely made a change in your business since then. Can you tell us more about how you made that shift? Yeah, so, yeah, I have background in IT. Uh, I worked uh, in big corporate companies, some multi-billion dollar companies as an IT guy, as a programmer, as a manager, project manager or team manager. So, um, yeah, I had some insights how those businesses were run and uh, how they solved problems. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'm not really smart. I'm working like a slave in my own publishing business. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to quit my day job because I, I'm quite lazy guy and a little bit lazy for my own. Yeah. And if something is new, I'm totally, totally going 100%, but at a while I get a little bit bored, so I need some something new. So I thought, well, I'm not really, yeah, I'm working 60 hours a week, but this is not scalable at all. I'm at my max, right. so I need to start doing things smarter. And I thought, well, I've experienced with managing a team, so I need to get people on board, not just use freelancers, but actually get people on board and start being a real business owner, a real entrepreneur with people, with a team, and with employees. Yeah. So I started recruiting people to uh, to run my business for me, mm -hmm. instead of that I have to do everything, every little detail myself. Yeah. yeah. And I think that. And now, yeah, to give you an idea, yeah, I forgot to. I used to work, yeah, I think 12 hours a day. My wife was a little bit complaining. And now my wife's complaining because I'm bothering her all the time because I'm bored. You know, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now I I do other things, but on my publishing business, I work one or two hours a day. Okay. What do you do on your other time? Well, I am uh, I created a nice course, of course, the last oh, few yeah. months, but let's talk about that later. Okay. I'm running, uh, I have my own Facebook group with mm -hmm. European self-publishers. Um, yeah, I like to do self-development, so I, I read books about okay. self-improvement, etc., etc. yeah. Nice, yeah, and I definitely see all those books in the background here. Yeah, but um, I still, I didn't read them all yet, I, I admit. <laughs> no, I still have to do some of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's amazing because, you know, that's exactly what happens to a lot of people. They try to build a business on their own to escape from their nine to five and then ends up just making another nine to five job for them or it's actually more than a nine to five it could be like nine to nine or like you yeah exactly days, you know and that's yeah. exactly what i did too because i was working a full-time job and then i was building my business on the side and then i went down to part-time on my job and then my business just went 
full time instead. So I just did a flip. <laughs> and now, you know, I quit my job. I'm full time uh, at home. And I try to put in five hours a day just because I want to kind of build it, you know, keep building. I don't have to, I think, to maintain the income. Um, yeah. But when I first started, that's definitely what I, you know, a uh, trap that I fell into was just, you know, building another job instead of building an actual yeah. business. So, yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. Because I heard somewhere that you need to know every step of the process and you need to know exactly um, how to do everything yourself. So that's right, right. when I yeah, kept on pushing myself to do more and better, etc. So I was always on, always working. Yeah. But that wasn't really the passive income business promised in many courses. Right. No. Yeah, and you know what I honestly think though is everybody promises, you know, the business to be passive, you know, and Kindle publishing definitely is passive income in terms of once you publish your book, it just keeps making money. <clears throat> but the thing is, books eventually fall off slowly in terms of sales, and that's kind of natural, you know, it's a natural process for a book unless you keep running yeah. ads or it really solidifies a rank in whatever keyword. Sometimes it happens where it just keeps selling forever, but usually it slowly, you know, dies out. So in order to maintain your income and grow it, you just have to keep publishing more. And if you want to make it a passive income business, um, the only way to maintain your income or grow it while making it passive is to outsource it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I feel like a lot of people don't really share, you know, uh, on like YouTube videos and whatnot. And that's no. something that you did a really great job because you have a, a, a team of people and a, a great system that's pretty much automating the entire process and you're just overseeing it, right, for an hour or two yeah. a day. So, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. I, um, I only have one VA, but it's definitely, you know, when he started, it, was a lifesaver saved me so many hours you know, in a day and yeah i love the guy yeah it's a lifesaver it totally changes the yeah your your own lifestyle totally changes already to have someone doing the tedious task for you yeah yeah so i'm curious can you tell us more about kind of the setup you have like how many people in your team what kind of tasks do you outsource yeah of course yeah, so at the moment I have two people uh, which I consider my employees. Of course, I have some freelancers contracted. If you're not really contracted, but they get their gigs, eh? they get the uh, projects. Yeah. And I have two full-time employees. One I call the more the yeah, the technical role, the technical VA or publishing manager, whatever name you want to give it. Yeah. And two the two women um, and the publishing manager. She published the books. She formats the books. She uh, Uploads them on all the different platforms like Graph Digital, Ingram Spark, mm -hmm. ACX, etc., etc., and um, run the ads, the AMS ads. And the other one, she has a more a special role which you don't really see other publishing, other publishers doing. I call her the content um, manager yeah. because she is really the yeah she knows the customer, so she is what I say she is my target audience. Mm -hmm. She lives in the Philippines, but if she would be living in the US or UK, she would be my target audience. So she knows my target audience better than I do, because she is the target audience. Yeah. And what she does, um, yeah, she analyzes the customer problems because she has them themselves. Mm -hmm. And then based on that, we designed a series of books. And um, she runs my Facebook group, my Facebook page. She creates all the posts for me. We post every day, um, and she, she even writes email to my audience, which really? is growing. So, yeah, now lately you see a shift from just pumping out books to uh, build your audience, have your own audience, so you're not really dependent anymore on a on Amazon. But as long as you have your own email list in your Facebook group, you always can sell a book. Yeah, yeah. So I thought, well, I need to follow that that strategy. And so I, uh, yeah, I hired another one who was my target audience. And now, yeah, she runs, she created the books, she proofread the books, she did all the book outlines, everything. And she um, grows my audience for me on autopilot. That's crazy. I, uh, yeah. 
I think that's a great idea to hire somebody that is in your target audience. I think that's genius. And I'm kind of amazed at how much you're outsourcing everything. That's, you're literally outsourcing everything in the content creation. And, yeah. And that part of like coming up with a good outline, really understanding, because you, you have to understand the target market to come up with a good book outline. And you have to under, or have a good book outline so that you can create a title that kind of is parallel to that, right? So yeah, that resonates be, with the audience. Right. Yeah. So everything has to be congruent. And, you know, I actually feel uh, felt like this for a long time, and I feel like a lot of viewers are thinking the same thing, is how, like, it sounds tricky to outsource the book title or the keyword research or, you know, the outline creation. Just because these, you know, VAs usually are from Philippines or mine is from Bangladesh. And you think their yeah. English, you know, skills isn't as par as someone living in the U.S. or so the culture is different. So they may not understand the target market the same, right? I guess it depends on the niche for that one. But Depends on niche, yeah. Yeah. So I feel like the main question people wonder is like, how skilled are these VAs actually, you know? then yeah. how confident can you be to outsource those kind of tasks? And obviously you are, you know, outsourcing it. So the answer must be they're very skilled, but can you kind of touch on that a little bit? Of course, yeah. Well, the, the technical one, um, I studied IT, but I always hated it. Yeah. I just uh, studied it because it uh, was in the 90s and it promised a lot of, of money. Yeah, yeah. And I liked to play in computer games, the first one with 16 colors. So I thought, let's study IT. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was, yeah, I did a good job, but I didn't really like it. And now she does all the tedious IT stuff for me, the technical one. And she does all the domains of the websites, everything, mm-hmm. building the landing pages. I couldn't be more happy, Sean. Couldn't be more happy that she does that part for me. And then the other one... Um, yeah, so the technical one is really skilled. Mm-hmm. Of course, I check everything. Eh? So never underestimate. So uh, don't expect to be the quality you want if you don't check it. You always have to check it. Right. And that's the only thing I really do in the one, two hours a day. Quality checking, quality mm-hmm. assurance. But yeah, every big company has that in the in their business processes. And I remember I worked for a big uh, Dutch company and we had one programmer, I was a programmer, and then we had test one, test manager one, test manager two, test manager three. Mm-hmm. So a piece of software was tested three times before it went actually went live and was used. Yeah. So um, in the beginning, the, your ta- task as the owner is doing the quality assurance and the testing is everything on par with my quality standards, also the book outlines. And but what I learned, sometimes I was doubting my content create creating em- employee. I thought, well, mm-hmm. does it really resonate with the market? And in the beginning I was always correcting them and then I thought, well I hired her because she's my target audience. Mm-hmm. So I okay, let's do an experiment. Let's leave her, and I don't really interfere a lot with her. Let's, and then I saw some posts which I want to block, but we, but that post went viral, without spending a dime on on, on advertising. Yeah. That post went viral, and I thought, okay, she knows the target audience better than I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, but you have to be, yeah, you have to exactly know where to get them. And how to select a good one, that's really tricky. Don't expect the first one you find on the street or online to be solving all your life problems for you and you can live a bit happy after. So that's really a part which yeah, you need to understand how to recruit the right um, employee for your business. Yeah, I definitely agree. You Not all virtual assistants have the same skill sets. You know, some no, are really... All. I mean, I don't want to say it, but they're not really that good. And, you know, of course, you can train them to a sort, certain degree. But if they don't have the mindset, if they don't want to learn, you know, you can't really do that. Right. So no. that's something I definitely uh, understand, because at one point I was interviewing like maybe 16 VAs, you know, and 
throughout like two months <laughs> and I hired yeah. two and I had to fire them immediately the next month in two separate occasions because they just weren't, you know, like engaged in the work and they were just kind of racking up hours just so they can get paid without doing the work. And, yeah. but, you know, you do have to go through the process of sorting, I think. But once you find that one good one that stays with you and that is really good, it really is a game changer. My VA right now, it's, you know, he saved me so much time. I don't look at my AMS dashboards for like the whole month. I just do no. you know, check up for like at the end of the month. The A cost is great, so yeah, it, it's been amazing. Yeah, yeah. that's really. Uh, you don't have to do the repeating tasks anymore. You just check them and you see, okay, this is going good, or oh, I should uh, inter help a little bit. But yeah, it's totally different the way you, uh, yeah, are in your business. Yeah, because I had a coaching call and someone asked me. Well, if you have to check everything your your employees do, it doesn't get it tedious. And I thought, what? But if you have to do everything yourself, I think it becomes more tedious. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I didn't really understand. I, I know where the question comes from, because if you have a bad experience with one VA, mm. and you think, well, that didn't work out, of course. But yeah, that's why I um, yeah emphasize you have to know where to go. Mm -hmm for the right VA and how to do the selection process. That's really yeah. essential. And I've gone through your course and you definitely cover this, like which website to go to, how to give them a test task, right? So you can yeah. know their skill set before hiring. So I think that was really good lessons that you covered there. But for yeah. those who are interested in, oh, actually, first I want to ask you, when is a good time to start hiring a VA in your business? Yeah, well, that's a really good question, and of the most easy thing for me is to say it depends on you, mm -hmm. but I won't say that, um, although it's a little bit true, of course, but you need to be able to um, run your publishing business profitably yourself, so you yeah. can teach someone else how to do it. So if you never have published any profitable book, don't expect to hire a VA, and he or she will do it for you. No, you have to train, explain, the VA and I in my course I, uh, I yeah. show you step by step how I did it, um, how to create a profitable book, and how to publish a profitable book. So that's one of the things skills you need to have, mm -hmm. um, so you can teach someone else. Yeah. And then money wise, yeah, you need to pay someone. I pay my VAs um, four hundred dollars per month each, $400 because they're for the Philippines, yeah. yeah. So, but you can start with one VA. So, if you cannot afford four hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. then don't get the VA. Really easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that was my next question actually on how much you're paying these VAs. Yeah. So that makes sense. So for those. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. I I pay them four hundred dollars every four weeks. I pay them every two weeks two hundred dollars per two weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you pay them bi-weekly. Yeah, bi-weekly. Yeah. Gotcha. Awesome. So for those who wants to get started with this, right, who want to start outsourcing everything, build up a team, you know, I know that you have a course. Can you tell us more about your course that you just created? Yeah, well, um, I, yeah, I was thinking about uh, uh, when I went after the second KQ Mastermind in yeah. 2000, August, September 2019, I hit my goal, 10K a month. And I flew back, and I think I have to do things differently. So I started uh, using my old experience, applying to my own publishing business. And then, um, yeah, I started paying more attention to my YouTube channel, paying more attention to my Facebook group. And then things become, yeah, in the beginning, I had to invest more time to train them. Mm -hmm. But then after a few weeks, I already saw my tasks going down, and I had more spare time to watch the quality, improve the quality of the end product. Yeah. And um, and have more time for my Facebook group. So because I had more time for my Facebook group, I started doing some group a group coaching call about this team exactly. So how to systemize, automate, and scale your publishing business with by hiring an employee. And I was preparing that group coaching call, and I thought, how can I put all the things I learned in my 19 years of corporate experience? Mm -hmm. And all the things I applied in my publishing business in a two-hour coaching call. 
impossible. So I thought, well, yeah, if, if people are interested in this, I'm going to create a course of it. Yeah. So that's, um, yeah, the, when I decided to create a course. And the other thing, when I was in, in IT, the only thing I really liked was giving training to people, helping other people. Mm. That was my only fun part of IT. And when I quit my IT job, I my goal was to, yeah, to in one day to create a course to help people, but I never knew with what. Yeah. And then I thought, well, I'm, I'm sitting on it because I automated my own publishing business and I can help other successful publishers do the same. Yeah. So those are the main reasons why I uh, created the course because, yeah, for me, before I was just a slave of my publishing business. Now I'm the king or the manager or the CEO or the president, whatever you want to call it, of my publishing business, yeah. Nice. And I definitely uh, think, so I went through the course uh, yesterday. Well, it actually took me two days to go through it, a couple hours. Uh, but I think it was a really great course. I actually learned you. a lot on like how much I can still outsource. Because like I said, I only have one VA, so he does all the technical side. And I still handle the content side because, you know, I still had the limiting belief that, you know, it's hard to outsource that section, right? Because it, yeah. a lot of times the creative aspect comes into that content side. And exactly, you have to yeah. Your market. But after going through the course, I definitely got a lot of ideas on how I can outsource way more than what I'm doing and uh, way more ways Great. to optimize the system. So I do, I do uh, recommend the course to like everybody who's more experienced and ready to start outsourcing and building the team, you know? Yeah. Well, thank you, Sean. Yeah, I'm flattered that okay. you also uh, learned stuff from it, yeah. Yeah, of course. So if anybody's interested, I will leave a link in the description and also I'll leave a link to your YouTube channel. So do you have anything else that you want to kind of touch on before I end this? No, um, at the moment, no. Only that, yeah, I am a big fan of you already since 2017. Uh, 2018, when did you start your channel? Yeah, I think so, 2018. Yeah, 2018, yeah. I think, um, I don't know how I discovered you, but somehow I discovered you qu quite fast, and I thought, okay. And I think what resonated with me that you also invested in real estate. I thought, whoa, yeah. that's smart. It's a smart, uh, smart guy. So, uh, <laughs> no, I have nothing else to share. No, at the moment. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the channel. You know, it was really nice talking to you. And uh, again, all the links are in the description. So, if anybody has questions, they can kind of join your Facebook group and ask you directly as well. But uh, yeah. thanks so much, man. I'll talk to you later then. Hey, thank you a lot, Sean. And talk, and we talk later. Right. Okay. Bye. Bye.